Good evening, Monadnock Region, and welcome to Go Mo Tonight, the Monadnock Region's only weekly, locally inspired comedy podcast. I'm here in the Space Lounge as your host, Chris DiLoretto, with my co-host, Zoe Roten Heinzman. And today, for a first time ever treat, we open our episode with a very special guest, Artie, artist Brandy Patterson. Brandy, thank you for joining us today on the program. Well, thank you for having me. Finally, exactly. It does. It feels. It feels like it's. Yes, it feels like it, this has been building and needing to happen for a long time. We have talked about Brandy several times on the show, um, and this Friday. This episode should be coming out by Wednesday or Thursday. We're recording this on Friday the 15th right now. Um, so this should be out in a few days. But Friday the 22nd, Brandy's art, which is currently hanging, as we've mentioned, in the library as part of its you know, rotating um, exhibit, is going to have a special event. And Chad, who is our sound lord, is going to be there to play some music accompanying Brandy as we explore these paintings together so we're super super excited we're all going to be there um it's going to be great but brandy please tell us a little bit about your art and about the art exhibit all right well so as you said it's at the peterborough uh library which by the way is a gorgeous library just it's wonderful yeah wow yes. <laughs> um so if you haven't gone now's the time to go um and so uh there in the uh, community uh gallery space um is some really big paintings that were um, a collaborative project with my husband. So not only is he the sound lord, but he also um, is a musician and a, a songwriter. So in the last uh, two, three years, he's been working on some music of his own. And uh, he released those on SoundCloud. And I was really wanting to do a collaborative piece with him. Um, and that's kind of been in the works for the last kind of year and a half. Um, and this kind of started with, uh, seeing that the, the library had an open space to just present a show. I thought, why don't we have my artwork up on the walls, but it be kind of riffed off of your music. Um, and I guess probably like a year or so ago, I realized I have sort of a synesthesia type of response. I, I didn't know that until I was talking to Chad about it. And he's like, no, that's not normally probably a thing. Like, <laughs> no, I don't see that. So I was like, oh, okay. So if you don't <laughs> know what that is, that means it's an involuntary response in your brain when you hear like sound or colors or numbers. It's different for different people. And then it involuntarily creates another response. Um, so for me, when I hear music, or feel like really intense, deep emotions, it tends to then, I see colors. Um, not just randomly, they don't just like flash by my eyes. It's a little bit more of a concentrated effort. Um, so because I discovered this, I was like, well, that would be a really cool show if I took your music and um, tried to translate that into paintings. Um, and so that's what I set out to do. And the library thought that was a great idea. And uh, so I worked three, four months on it. And I listened, we picked the songs that he was like, yep, those ones I want, I want to use. And I just listened to them on repeat. I took a lot of notes, um, sketches. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of worked from there on how do I translate what I see into what uh, so someone else can see it it's, you know what am i experience how do i get that in in front of other people so that's the broad terms and so the show has um three large canvases uh which each resembles one of his uh songs corresponds with that and then alongside them are paintings along the process that I was doing. So what I also wanted to show is paintings as with any other creative work, writing a podcast, mm -hmm. <laughs> music. Um, we don't just sit down the first time round and just like bang it out. And you're like, right. Masterpiece, you know, a lot yeah. of like just bad stuff comes out like the ugly, messy phase. And a lot of people, if you're not in the creative realm, don't know that. And as I've been, um, 
you know, married to Chad and we talk a lot about the creative um, overlap between writing music and creating art and how the processes are a lot times the same. Um, I wanted to show that visually. So when I was painting some of the works, I actually stopped a lot of the practice paintings at different stages and set those aside so that the viewer can see that the original, like the, the final painting <laughs> didn't start that way. <laughs> right. Um, and so you can see like, this is a practice painting. This one is also a practice painting and they don't look anything alike, but you can kind of see how they sort of blend together. Um, and then, then the final part about the, the show there, if you go to the Peterborough uh, library is there's a QR code, use your fancy phones, scan it, and it will actually direct you to the song that Chad, um, wrote, produced, did his sound lord magic on. Um, and so you can listen to it and see the work that corresponds with it at the same time. Um, so that's, yeah, that's sort of the over overview. So if you've got questions, go and then I'll answer. <laughs> so I just, I just, did you create this show for the Peterborough library space? Yes. Okay. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah, so they because on awesome. they were like, "Hey, we got this new space," and I, I think both of you actually sent me the like, "Hey, you should like submit your work." Yeah, I th as soon I as I saw it, I did. I was like, "Oh, Brandy, Somebody. this is a great opportunity." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was like, "Well, I'm not exactly in the region, but I'll submit no. anyways, and we'll see if they're okay with." It. And they were like, "Yeah, we're you know we're fine." Some people think like local is like literally, you know, Peterborough or right, you know, a little bit more expansive. So. Um, I did. So they had pictures of it. I had gone and visited it in uh, November, December, so I could see the space and understand it a little bit better. And then I did when I had because I had to submit what a show was for. I was like, yeah, why not? Let's just create a show just for that space. Um, That's so cool. And then when I presented it, they're like, are you ready in January? I was like, I don't have any paintings done. I <laughs> I'm <laughs> No, we're like, well, we can do April. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's not, that sounds better. Yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, it was good fun. Nice. Um, yeah, and they we, have we like, like uh, such an easy hanging system there. So I was like, well, that was fine. And Chad does all the big ladders. So that, he was in charge of that. He had to climb up there. Oh, that's cool. Them. So do they have, um, like, is it built sort of like to make this easy? Yes. So, and that's what I loved is when they were thinking about oh, cool. like a library as a community space you know, um, you know, use the, the conference rooms for different types of events, but they, mm -hmm. they specifically made the up landing before you walk into the library to that big, huge, what is that? The 18 something room, 33 room, the 1833 room. Yeah. 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 Um, that, that kind of community gallery is right there on the landing. And they really yeah. did think that through and gave some really beautiful large wall spaces and spent the money on some track lighting and as well as an easy track install. One, then the library's not constantly putting holes in their nicely done walls. And True, no one really yeah. wants to fill holes and repaint anyways. So yeah, they invested in some beautiful, you know, easy hang. Um, and lighting and they've got um, I do have a display case there which shows some of the tools that I use some of the paint some of Chad's guitar strings some of just my notes when I was going through this process um, sketches and bits so you can kind of get an idea again of the process to create um, peel back the curtain on that and just be like this is kind of the messy middle bit before we get to the masterpiece over here you know so yeah, beautiful yeah, space. Yeah, I love that. And that's cool too, because I mean, there's so many little things like that about the library. And that was one that I didn't know was that they had actually like, you know, you know, made it so that things could be hung and rehung easily. And the ladies, it, it certainly looks perfect. Um, but that's really cool that it's, it's also easy from a, you know, like from an artist's, um, you know, kind yeah. of hanging and setting yeah. up perspective. Yeah, but, that yeah. makes us happy. That's you yeah, know, I don't have no, to bring totally. as much. <laughs> Makes us all happy, I think. Yeah. Um, so, um, so with like the practice paintings, one thing that I was wondering as I looked at them is, is there like what, um, what kind of marks the point where you stop on that practice painting? Yeah, that was really hard because that's not something I've I've done before, um, and it was easy to want to just keep going on them and exploring the ideas. So I 
when I was selecting each song, I just said, this is how many canvases I allotted myself so much um, canvas to work on, to practice on. And when I paint anyways, I tend to paint in multiples. So I would have, say, like three or four canvases before I started on the big one to just get colors going and get marks going down, kind of get the ideas flowing. And then um, I might have liked where something was and been like, ooh, that's really cool. And then I would just kind of – it was really hard, actually, to just stop and set that canvas aside and then just continue to go, okay, what else is next? What would, what would I want to try? Um, and then working on the big one maybe alongside that and go, okay, well, I like what's going on in the practice ones. Let's translate that onto the big one. And well, it never translates well because going small to big is not really that easy either. That's a whole nother challenge. But, and then I'm working on the big one and I might come back to the practice ones again, try some more things on there um, and getting to a point of like, oh, that's an interesting stage. Again, stop Paul take I like had to take them out of the studio because I would lose track of which practice one went with which painting. <laughs> so they were like all over my house. Like this one goes with this one. Um, don't get them confused, you know. <laughs> yeah. It was a thing. Um, and then at the end, when I was curating uh, the work, so everything that's up there is not everything that I practiced on, obviously. Um, so. I went and was like, okay, where, what shows a good transition from one kind of practice to another, you know, some practice paintings can look really, really similar. Um, but others can just look completely opposite. So I wanted to show a little bit of that as well. So, but it was hard cause I wanted to just keep working on the practice painting. And yeah. Like, I can imagine. Yeah. yeah. Oh, these are going in a really cool place. I'm like, right. Oh no, I need those. Like, Oh, I guess I got to stop. You know? <laughs> That's interesting that they're not really sketch it. You know, they're not really practice paintings and like you're working out a full idea that then you're going to take over here, that there's kind of like a back and forth. That's really interesting. Yeah. I, t I tend to work that way anyways. Um, I, I love working large. So one, when the library was like, we have big, tall walls, like my heart's just really happy. Yeah. Um, I really don't like working small, but uh, so, but to work large, I needed to just I like to just work large and just get all the ideas on one, but because I wanted to show those layerings that a lot of times in my finished work, you don't know that I've painted over it probably 20 or 30 times. You don't see that. Um, you only see glimpses of that. Um, so having to go back and forth between the big ones and the small ones or the other ones I had was, was a, a new learning experience for me as well. Um, and also not trying to make the little ones like a finished piece, leaving them kind of raw and like, ooh, that's kind of ugly. That's the point. Like, they shouldn't, they shouldn't, I, I shouldn't put a, for me, I wouldn't want to put a price tag on some of the price uh, practice paintings. No, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, I, I was wondering that too. I was like, what if somebody wants to buy them? Because I didn't see any <laughs> prices. Yeah, it's not, nope, not that's an option. Why, that's why it says price. <laughs> Practice paintings. Yeah, right, right. Because, right. <laughs> like, I, um, so I also, there, when, when you go to the library, um, on one of the walls has a little bit of a bio of myself and my process mm -hmm. and also of Chad. So he tried to give a little bit, um, that's by each painting as well, like a little bit of a write up on like how I yep. approached it and then how he did on that kind of technical musical end. Um, you know, trying not to give everyone a wall code. of text either, because, you know. Yeah. I don't need to fall asleep, but um <laughs> No, I thought they were appropriately sized. Yeah, they, they were they were they were moderate, you know. Yeah, like, you know, yeah. you know. Um talking to writers here, you know, just like okay, no yeah, one's yeah, reading yeah, walls. No, it, was, it was concise, yeah. <laughs> well can edited. We, can we yeah. bullet point it, you know? Right. Um, yeah, it's a thing. But um I have no idea where I was going with that thought. But anyways, if you're at the library, there is a little bit more like bio information of how those kind of came about. Um, for both of us. Yeah. And I think you can see it. Like I'm looking at a picture right now that I took um, last night of, um, and I'll, I'll include it with the episode, but it's of the um, crying in the rain and with the practice paintings on either side. And you can totally see it. Like it really almost looks like not that it's a combination of the two, but almost like uh, they're its parents. You know what yeah. I mean? And and so like the, the painting is it's, it's not cause you know, like a child is not just a, quite just a combination, you know, that you can see anyways. Right. It's right. a, 
it's a it's a blend and a production that it's a third thing that comes out you know but you can you can totally see it like it's like the you know it's like the spirit of this and the spirit of this are they're in they're in it you know uh, but not the same yeah exactly um and there is the continuation of um which was intentional as well of like color palette um and so instead of each kind of um in a way that's a bit of what i see um and then also a, a conscious choice as well of it is a show so it is a collection so i wanted it to kind of feel like it did kind of all go together so that that dynamic of what i see in my kind of mind's eye and actually how do I curate something was also really interesting um, for me to work through um, because it doesn't always translate well, like what's up here, <laughs> to what can come out um, in a painting. So. Yeah. I want to ask a little more about the synesthesia bit. Like my whole family has number color synesthesia. Okay. And we learned this when my daughter was turning five I think and she was like oh I'm so glad to be turning five because five is green and I love that color and I'm like what what are you talking about she had no idea that other people didn't see this and so turns out they all see these numbers I do not see numbers of any color not even black when I think of a number they're just, it's not a visual experience for me mm. um <laughs> so I was just wondering your version of synesthesia is music and emotions. I'm really intrigued by the fact that you recently discovered this. And then just, is it because you, you didn't know that other people weren't seeing it? So you didn't know to talk about it? Or do you feel like it's something that developed later in life? Um, I think I became more aware of it later in life. Um, and I think because I, have in the last two to three years, have focused a lot more creatively. I do have a background in education of, of art. Um, I went to college for art and things like that. Um, but really focusing on creative output, um, when you put it in, it comes out. So I, was, I think I just became a lot more aware of what I was seeing. And then living with another creative... Um, I think just kind of enhanced that a little bit as we talked through it. So then I was saying like, Hey, you know, when I experience this or I hear this, well, I'm starting to see like orange at this note. And he's like, Hmm, that's interesting. Tell me more. <laughs> like, when does that happen? And I'm like, um, is that a thing? Honestly, why do I have to explain that talk to about you? It because everyone's going to be like, what have you been smoking? Or yeah. like, what, are you okay? You know? What are you guys doing in this creative household of yours? Right. Like really what's going on. Um, yeah. So I just don't think, you know, we talk about it or like your, your, your child. Um, it's so normal that we don't think that it's not, not normal for somebody else, you know, like, well, right. obviously it's green. Cause I experience it. So, right. Oh wait, you don't experience it, you know, um, right. so a little bit of that. So I think it was just, I was getting more aware of it. Um, and then talking about it, realizing like, Oh, that's, that's like, you don't see that when you listen to music, Chad, like, no. Oh, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anybody else you know like right. and I heard of, of the of the synesthesia before so I actually had to like look it up and be like oh that's what's going on because I wasn't oh, actually, wow. like sure you know like mm, that sounds weird were you worried <laughs> were you like am I developing a brain tumor or were you <laughs> not, is this a side effect of being a mom like oh. <laughs> okay um, I think it also kind of began a little bit more last year. I started, um, I did a 100 day project and I only did 40 days of it, but it was related to music and colors. And I was almost doing the same thing where I would listen to a song on repeat, but I only had five minutes and then I had to immediately respond to the music with whatever I had on hand. I couldn't overthink it. I couldn't like make it pretty. Um, and so I remember, um, that probably not kickstarted it, but it made me much more aware because I was already tuning my ear to listen and respond very quickly. Um, and so I did like 40 days of that. And um, That's so interesting. Did, yeah. I don't know if you've ever heard of the 100 Day Project. It's quite a fun, like creative um, thing for writers or artists or anyone who wants to do something for 100 days. 
Um, I've only done ever 40 because I lost steam after a while. <laughs> I was going to say, I am horrible at doing anything oh. every single day without missing it. And But yeah, 40 days is quite impressive, um, even yeah. making it that far. Yeah, 100 days is... Um, yeah. Yeah, so I didn't do it this year. I was going to do it this year, but I was working on this show for the Peterborough Library, and I just couldn't do both at the same time. Not enough yeah, bandwidth. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of having a lot going on, like what um, what are some of the other things um, that you have upcoming? Okay, well, so tomorrow um, I will be in Concord at the Everett Arena. There is a kind of craft fair we don't really use the term art fair here in new hampshire it's more like arts mm. and crafts but anyway yeah that's true small business fair let's go with that because we're all yeah, trying sure. to sell something so yep. um <laughs> anyways so i will be at the ever arena tomorrow in concord from 10 to 3 and i've got some smaller um paintings uh which go great for for gifts or if you don't have a lot of space on your walls like just smaller works on paper and some in some frames so i'll be doing that tomorrow um and today so i am tempted just... to buy a, pra- a small practice painting brandy has actual completed paintings that are, <laughs> no they're not practice well. paintings i don't sell practice paintings <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, no no they get painted over again or burned you know yeah that's sort of thing. great uh, no, we're not allowed to burn in the city, so we'd have to go somewhere else. Anyways, um, yeah. And so then today actually here. was a big, <laughs> was a big, was a big day for me. Um, so I had a collection that came out last uh, September called my Inhale Exhale Collection. It's a very vibrant pinks and purples and blues, um, and that whole remaining collection because I've sold some pieces from that already, but the remaining of that actually went. To um, bank pro- bank prov lobby for the arts. That's a mouthful. Um, in Exeter for the remainder part of the year. So their lobby is full of now my art. So anyone in the Exeter region or going over to the seacoast or whatever, um, they have it there. So they support artists in their lobby. So that's what I've been doing. Anything else I've been doing? That's it. That's really. I, I love the colors of that collection, by the way. That, Thank you. That pink is one of my favorites. The pink and blue in that collection is really cool. Yeah, it's. I'm definitely going even more neon. Like you can see, the work behind me is even brighter. Um, I like that. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it could be because I'm a mom, and so just all of the delight of life is sucked out of you. So you have gotta find some <laughs> <laughs> some way to bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> need something. Uh, maybe I don't know. Um, yeah. And so then the other, the last thing would be, um, next Friday's opening is uh, at the Peterborough library is the kind of the next biggest, um, item on my list. And then there's a, I'm going to breathe over the summer a little bit. I say that, but I probably won't. Um, yeah, but for now (laughs) you can tell yourself that at least. Yeah, totally. I'm going to, I'm going to try. There's no, there's no impending deadlines. Um, so we're good. So next Friday at the Peterborough library from five to seven, um, I'm going to be there. Chad's going to be there about six o'clock. He's going to actually play the music live that, excuse me, is, um, in, that has inspired the work. Obviously, he won't have a drum kit and have like all the, you know, recording bits, but he's going to play it live um, totally. there at the library. Um, so he's going to sing the songs and then you get it's to look cool. at the art. The library will be open. Hopefully we won't interrupt anyone wanting to do any work. <laughs> it's okay. It's not that quiet in there. Like, it's not one of those silent libraries, I don't feel. Like, we, we go in and out of there all the time having meetings and, and events and things like that. And Yeah. Truly a um, community. Yeah. yeah it's, and, I like, it's a community space. PM on a Friday, like, nobody's going to be like, shh. <laughs> it's, it's not that kind of library, fortunately. <laughs> so. <laughs> no, if that's the case, I'll be like, get some headphones. This is twenty. Yeah, exactly. Like, right. Yeah, yeah really. really. <laughs> so, anyways, no, um, the libraries, uh, you know, we we're able to have opening receptions and gatherings, um, in the space. So we'll be there. I'll be there. You know, talking about the work. Just any questions, um, pointing out, you know, the fun nuances of each piece. Um, and I think the library is uh, providing some light refreshments. I don't know what that entails are, yeah. at the moment, but they yep. said they got that covered. So I was like, all right, you know. 
They do it. No they do alcohol. It right that's there. not allowed in the library. So yeah, right. Sorry. right. Yes, 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 that is that is true. This is it's not like a silent library, but it's also not a booze library either. So anybody's <laughs> no. wondering. No, no, it's not it's what a happy medium. Yeah. yeah, sometimes that's happy. To, important to point out, you know, Friday night event. Um, you have to wait till after. Um, but yeah. as long as that's not a concern for you. Um, right. Right. Yeah. It's it's yeah. That's not allowed in libraries. I I was reading somewhere that like there was one library. I don't think it was in New Hampshire, but they got like a special liquor license for just opening reception nights, or like they had oh, like a yearly auction or something. And so yeah, they, they can do like, a special license or something. Yeah, just for that night. Yeah, because <laughs> otherwise is, they're not allowed. <laughs> Yeah, right, right. Oh, that's so funny. Uh, so yeah, that's that's, cool. that's really what I, I'm, I'll i be up doing. Um, and then like I said, through the summer, remaining part of the spring and the summer, I'm just gonna, I'll be in the studio. Um, I was gonna painting. say, have some time to create. You need that I, time. I know, I, yeah. I have to make some more work. Um, yeah. But I don't have like a deadline of like another show coming up. I've kind of just um, take a breather on that. Um, and then I can just play in the studio and create and explore and, and enjoy the summer in in all the parts of that, you know, which is uh, totally important and awesome. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I think well, I have w one last. Yeah, go quick ahead, question. Joey. Yeah, please. Um, yeah, I was looking at your website and I saw that it said all your current paintings are non-edible. So I was just wondering if you had an edible painting line <laughs> planned for the summer oh, or beyond. That would <laughs> I would love that. I'm so glad you found that. It's like a little Easter egg nugget in there. <laughs> I think you're the only person that's ever mentioned that little like oh, that's sarcastic awesome. remark. <laughs> I um, I'm not look currently, for that but I would love to have some way. Again, that experience of like, how do we create work that is more than just for the eyes? So that thought is always kind of in the back of my head. Like paintings obviously are very visual, but like, can they taste it? I don't know. And can you smell like it? Like a Willy Wonka wallpaper. Yes. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, be without cool. any extra help of any outside substances, you know, just. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the, currently I don't have a, an, an edible range of artwork. <laughs> that would be I'm interesting. Look, I'm like trying to find this now. <laughs> I think it's on like my about page, like on the all the way down. Um, if you find it, tell, send it to me, and I'll send you a yeah. discount code. Anyways, um, yeah, awesome. there's not, nothing currently edible. Um, I don't know, maybe maybe a collaboration with a local like you know pastry chef or a or a you know candy company or something that you know we collaborate on colors and themes or something that would be kind of cool i'm open for a collaboration so interesting yeah you know so and then it would be edible it would be like <laughs> buy this chocolate inspired by brandy's paintings <laughs> that would be oh, really fun that is so awesome that's cool well brandy's website is bmpatterson.com and again let us all know if you find the um the quote about things being um edible or not and um, Brandy will be at the Peterborough Town Library. The the um uh, you know again on Friday night the twenty second from five to seven. The art will be at the library all the way through May twenty eighth. So it's been up since April first, and it's going to continue on through. So I really kind of love it that they're doing these like two month at a time exhibits, um, which is which is super neat. Um, so check out Brandy's website. Come and see us all on the 22nd at 5 p.m. It's going to be awesome. And, um, you know, just a really cool community art event on a Friday night. And, um, you know, stay tuned. But, you know, Brandy, thank you again. We always say that you and Chad are our biggest fans in Manchester and that you guys are honorary Monadnock region people. <laughs> um, and so we, we can't wait to see you next week. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And I look forward to seeing you. Yes. Thanks. All right. Take care.